You're probably wondering what this wacky looking space gun is. Maybe a Star Wars prop, perhaps? Well, you wouldn't be too far off, but it's actually a Calico M100P, a strange little gun that was dual wielded by none other than Claire Redfield in Resident Evil Code Veronica. Let's talk about it. For those of you who are unaware of who or what Calico is, Calico Light Weapons Systems is a firearm manufacturer currently based out of Oregon. The company was founded in California in 1982 and is well known for making crazy pistols and carbines throughout the 1980s, 90s, and even today. Their claim to fame is the large helical magazines they incorporate into their designs. Without knowing it, you may have seen one of their guns in films like Spaceballs or 007 Tomorrow Never Dies. You may also recognize it from video games like Fallout Tactics and, of course, Code Veronica. In Code Veronica, you take control of Claire Redfield, the down-on-her-luck survivor of Raccoon City who is now a bona fide action hero. Eh, just kidding. She's still caught off guard by zombies. Somehow. About 10 minutes into the game, Claire is ambushed by a zombie guard who just so happens to be carrying two Calico M100Ps. Now, why was this man using two weird 22 pistols as his primary means of defense? I have absolutely no clue. However, this is to Claire's advantage since these pistols are pretty darn useful. The Calicos in game are correctly called the M100P, even though that should probably be plural. They are described as a semi-automatic pistol which has a large sized special magazine. This handgun enables precise rapid shooting with little recoil. These pistols use a percentage based ammo system instead of a one for one counter like the other guns. They fire faster than the Beretta 93R you get as a starter weapon and shoot off two rounds at once, sometimes targeting two enemies at the same time. Every volley of 2 rounds is equal to 1% of the ammo, meaning you have 100 shots and 200 total rounds. It also means that the guard you took them off was really bad, since he didn't even fire off a single shot during the outbreak. Although awesome, the Calico's use can be short-lived since the ammo that comes with the guns is all you get. They can't be reloaded. Now let's take a look at the real thing. Unfortunately, I do not have two of them yet, but I do have one that is in decent condition. As you can see on the side, it is marked M100P. These are the older models of the gun. The newer models were called M110s and had some minor internal adjustments to the bolt and feed lips on the magazine. The M100P is a tough little gun, being made mostly out of aluminum alloy and stainless steel. It weighs 2.2 pounds unloaded and a whopping 3.75 pounds fully loaded. That means Claire was running around with 7.5 pounds of pistol. The grip and magazine are glass fiber reinforced thermoplastic, with the grip being surprisingly comfortable. There is a simple ambidextrous safety selector above the grip that is easily manipulated, although it can be in the way sometimes. Some people rag on the Calico's trigger, but I think it's pretty nice. It's a little weighty and there's just the tiniest fraction of creep, but then you get a nice clean break, followed by a little over travel. Reset is very short and positive. Uh, there's a bolt catch located inside the trigger guard. A strange choice, but uh, I've never had it get in the way. Moving up, you have the uh, cocking handle. It's uh, small but functional. <laughs> if you look at the other side, you'll see the bolt and ejection port. The barrel is 6 inches long and comes with a little sci-fi muzzle brake on the end. Continuing to move up, we find a little micro carry handle front sight combo that you can hang all your charms from. The front sight is windage adjustable, as you can see by this knob, and takes the shape of a bright orange trapezoid. Now we move on to what is probably the most interesting part of the pistol, the magazine. The Calico magazine is a helical feed design, as you can see in this image. It has a 100 round capacity and uses a torque spring to propel rounds along their helical track. Interesting, right? You can release the magazine by pushing in both of the mag catches on either side of the pistol. Turning it over, you can see the feed lips in the follower. At the back, there is a simple notch rear sight with two painted white dots on it. That's right, the rear sight is actually on the magazine. Below that is the clutch that's used to wind up the spring and create tension. 
There's a little button in the center of that which releases the spring tension when pushed in. So how do you load it? And it's basically the same as any magazine, but with a few extra crucial steps. First thing, ensure you release any spring tension. Hit the button in the center of the clutch. If the tension was already let out, you might not hear anything. If there's a lot of tension, you'll feel it and hear the telltale burb noise as it lets out. Now check the follower. If it isn't at the top of the feed lips, you may have to wind it a few times to give it a bit more tension. As soon as that pops up, you can begin loading your ammo. The manual recommends using high velocity 22 long rifle to ensure the pistol cycles properly. This part can be tedious if you're going the full Monty and loading 100 rounds. If spring tension builds up over the course of loading, make sure to re-release it. Once you've loaded your desired amount, it's time to wind her up. As per the manual, we'll make 15 complete rotations. There is a little notch on the winder so you can keep track of that easier. If you don't do enough rotations, you may have feeding problems. If you do too many rotations, you could damage the spring. So try not to lose count. Now you just line up the magazine with the circular notch on the pistol and click it back into place. You're ready to go. The process isn't too bad, but now I can see why Claire couldn't reload her calicos. If you didn't have prior knowledge or a manual, it might be tricky figuring out how to load the magazines properly. That or she just didn't find any more 22. Either way. So is this pistol practical? No. Uh, no, not really. Like I said before, I have no idea why that guard would be going guns akimbo with 22 calicos. The pistol is fairly unwieldy. Even if you're an experienced pistol shooter, just picking this thing up is strange. Having half the gun and rear sight jutting back over your forearm takes uh, some getting used to. And the entire thing is just shy of 18 inches long. Replacement magazines aren't cheap. New production ones from Calico start at $125 a pop. And those need slight modifications to fit these older types. Another drawback is maintenance. Now and then you might find your magazines getting sluggish. You'll have to rip apart the helical mag and clean it out, all while trying not to mess anything up. The instructions on how to do this in the manual take up about five pages alone. Those things aside, I can't help but love this pistol. It makes up for its drawbacks by being really creative and cool looking. But that can be said about nearly every Calico firearm. And even though it's a bitch to reload, you can't complain about 100 rounds of 22 when you finally get out to the range and start blasting. Speaking of that, let's go do it. Alright, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed watching and maybe learned something new. I have more Resident Evil guns coming soon, so stay tuned.